Well, I think it has to be Daddy. Thanks. <laughs> Hey and welcome, I'm Stephen and this is Jordan and we're going to be going over how to play the World Eaters. Now at the end of this video we're going to be covering my top list that does not mm -hmm. include Angron. So if you're interested in finding out what that army list is, stay tuned until the end and I'll be going over my, what I feel like is a nice well balanced army list that doesn't include Angron. Yes. Something yeah. a little bit different. So we're going to go over the army faction, we're going to go over the rules, and also give you some top combinations and ways to hopefully consider utilising these units on the tabletop, right the way from deployment all the way through to their target priorities and what they're going to be fantastic at doing. Mm -hmm. We're also going to talk about some of the limitations of the army and where you might need to try and plug some of those gaps or you know, really utilise your skill set to uh, you know, get the most from your models. So, Jordan, where are we going to start with World Eaters? Okay, Steve, so what is their faction rule? Okay, so their faction rule, um, and this is what you get for being just a world eater, mm -hmm. okay, is called the Blessings of Corn. Oh, sounds good. All right. Mm. Now, what you're going to do is basically roll eight dice. Why eight? Because that is Corn's number. Okay. Now, you're going <laughs> to roll eight dice at the start of the battle round, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be activated until the end of that battle round. Right. Some of these blessings are defensive and offensive. Okay, nice. So some are going to increase your durability, mm -hmm. some are going to increase your damage output, and some of them are going to increase your mobility. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's a nice well-rounded um, way to field the army. Yeah, and that's exactly. We can push this army to whichever kind of dimension we need to, cool. to make sure it really gets the most from the play style that we want from that turn. Nice. Okay, so if you're going second, you mm -hmm. might want to pick out some of those more defensive buffs. Yes. Okay, and we've got a really great one here, which is called Raffle Devotion. I like the We'll name. come on to that one later. Yeah. Um, so you're going to roll these eight dice. Yeah. And then what you're going to start to do is pick away any doubles, triples. Oh, okay. Of those eight dice. Right. So let's say you roll a couple of twos. Mm -hmm. Cool. You've got a pair. Right, okay. Let's say you roll three fours. Cool. You've got a, a triple. Yeah. A triple four there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then what you can do is select two of the Blessings of Corn, right. and there's one, two, three, four, five, six to pick from, right. and you can have two active for your entire army, okay, okay. that right. have the World Eaters keyword, yeah, so sure. if you've got any allied units, it's not going to affect them. Right, so like Demons of Corn, for instance. That's right. Cool. But yeah, this just means that for those World Eaters units, you're going to get a couple of benefits. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through what they are. The first one is plus two move. Nice, okay. This, this is any double. Yep. So quite easy to get, yep. plus two move, brilliant. We then call Raffle Devotion, which we spoke about. This again, mm -hmm. any double. Okay. This is going to allow your army to have a six plus feel no pain, or if you already have a six plus feel no pain, it will push it to a five plus feel no pain. Right, okay, so that's increasing your durability a bit more. It really is, yeah. Great. Okay, so again, that's a fantastic one if you're going second. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely utilize that one. Um, the next one is called Martial Excellence. You need a double, but but it has to be on a three or more. The okay, double. Okay, right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So with this, we're going to get sustained hits one. Okay, that's, so that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. So that means every time you roll a critical hit, which is a hit roll of a six, that's going to essentially generate another hit for you. Right. So this is great if you're into, um, you know, lots of different models mm -hmm. that you're trying to fight. Okay, you're really trying to drown your opponent in saves. Yeah, sure. Okay, really good for that. What happens if you already have sustained hits? It doesn't stack, does it? It wouldn't, though. No. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Um, then we've got Total Carnage. This is any double four plus mm -hmm. or any triple. Okay. So a double four plus or, or, a triple. or any triple. Okay. And this allows you to fight on death. Okay. okay. Right, so that might be handy if you're coming up against another combat ex expertise army. Yeah. Cool. But it only triggers on a 4+, plus when you're actually in combat as well. Right, so you've got a 50-50 chance of it actually going off. Yeah, for okay. that model, model okay. to model. Right, okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Um, then next we've got Warp Blades. Is any double of a 5+, plus, mm -hmm. so a 5+, plus or a 6+, plus, um, or any triple. Okay. And this gives you lethal hits. Right, so critical hits um, automatically wounds the target. Yeah. So brilliant when you're fighting against some of those more tougher targets, yep. but terrible if you've got devastating wounds. 
Yeah, because they don't work in conjunction with each other. Because you'll right, actually yeah. miss out on rolling yeah. the dice to wound. Yeah, sure. You won't trigger any devastating wounds. Sure. And then the final one is called Unbridled Bloodlust. It's mm -hmm. a double six or a triple four plus. Okay. Okay. And that allows you to advance in charge. I like this one. Very good. Yeah. You can really push your mobility with this army to a yeah. massive degree. Um, you know, you can have plus two move and advance in charge, mm -hmm. and there's ways to accentuate that even more. So you can right, be okay. very aggressive from the get-go of the army. And I think right. that's a certain strength you have to build in yeah. to be effective with this army, definitely. Yeah, because you want to be in, into combat from as quickly as, as, a, yeah, as quickly as you can. So yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Nice. What would you recommend, though, if you was like going to be using these? Which ones would be your top two? Well, I don't think I can give you a top two. Okay. Because I think all of them are great. Yeah. I think you need to be, the, gr the best commander is going to be one that's going to be able to pick the one at the right time. Right, okay. So, for example, if I was going second, mm -hmm. I'd probably go for, um, depending on who I'm fighting. Right. If I'm playing against what might be a, um, an army that wants to push out mm -hmm. and throw some little units away to hold objectives and do damage to me, I'm going to want a, a six up feel no pain. Yeah. Yeah, and I might want advance in charge because if they push out into those middle objectives, mm -hmm. I want to be able to capitalize on that. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. So if, however, I'm going first, mm -hmm. I want plus two move and advance in charge. Right. And that might depend on if I've got scout moves in the unit, mm -hmm. if I've got scout units in the army or the deployment map as well. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. yeah. But failing that, if I'm in amongst it, getting a, you know, Getting about in combat, yeah. I probably want both sustained hits and lethal hits. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If I'm if I'm in the thick of it and I'm just looking for sheer damage output, that's exactly what I yeah, want. Yeah, definitely. And I think this army is obviously going to excel in combat, isn't it? So that, that's yeah. definitely a good trap. So let's look at the um, detachment rule next. So the detachment rule is called Relentless Rage. I like it. Affects all my world eaters units on the charge. I'm going to get right. plus one attack mm -hmm. and plus one strength. Right, so similar to the Blood Angels detachment one. Yeah. Um, Nice, okay. So the only downside to that I see is that you have to charge to be able to get the benefit of the detachment. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if it is a detachment rule, it's not the best. Yeah. Because if you think about this ability, you're only going to get it in one phase of the game. Yeah. And you're only going to get it in 50% of the game as well. Yeah, sure. So sure. out of the moving, shooting, charge and combat yeah. phase, mm -hmm. you're only going to get it for one turn. Yeah. One of those phases, so 25% of the phases, you're mm. going to get your ability, and you're only going to get it for 50% of the game as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I guess it just gives you a little buff, though, doesn't it? It's nice when you get into combat, maybe, but... There is one exception. Yeah? If you hurry a clean to bean, mm -hmm. because you did make a charge, you still will get this. Oh, so it specifically states that? No, but because you are making a charge move this turn, oh, okay. and Hero Clean Devening does count as a charge move, you just don't get the benefits of charging, and the benefits of charging as the term of our games work, right. are the fight first. Okay, right, so that's brilliant to know, actually. Okay. So still trigger this, yeah. yeah. Awesome, nice. All right, well, should we um, take a quick break and we'll look at the enhancements next? Let's do it. But before we continue, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, The Outpost. If you're looking for a great deals on your miniatures, paints and gaming supplies, we've got you covered. Their wide variety of exceptional service makes them the go-to destination for all hobby needs. So don't wait, check out The Outpost today. Link in the description below. Okay, Steve, so let's look at the enhancements now, mate. Okay, so we've got four to choose from. Nice. Now remember, with enhancements, you can pick up to three. Right. You can have one on a non-epic hero. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. and they're pointed upgrades. Yeah, sure. So the first one is called Favoured of Corn. Right, what's I this I think one this do? is a really strong one. Yeah. And essential if you're taking Angron. Yes. Now you can't put on Angron, but no. this character, this enhancement will support Angron. Mm -hmm. And we'll come on to why later on. Yeah, okay. definitely. But basically, every time you make that Blessings of Corn roll. Right, so the army rule that we spoke about previously. Yeah, before doing anything else. Mm -hmm. The bearer can use this enhancement. If it does, you discard all the dice um, and you basically roll again. Right, okay. and they have FAQ did say it's only once per battle round. Is that right now? Do you get the full rerolls? Yes, you can't yeah. just keep re-rolling and yeah. re-rolling. Okay, okay, cool. cool. Um, so the new roll does not count as a re-roll, though. Yeah. All sure, right, that's sure. one thing to know. Okay. So if you've got other ways to re-roll a single dice, you can absolutely do that. Okay, brilliant. All cool. right. Yeah, nice. Okay, so next up we've got the Berserker Glaive. Okay, I like this one, Steve. Yeah, so you add plus one attacks and damage to your character. Brilliant. And if you charge, okay, then you're going to get D3 extra attacks and damage. 
if you can manage to get them high rolls on that, yeah, the damage output of your characters has just gone from here to. It really has. In there. we've got a character with this in the yes. army, and we'll go over the exact combination that you're going to need to get the most. We rolled it out earlier. Mm. Twenty damage to an Imperial Knight. Yeah, pretty good. He, that he, was he, before any kind of uh, feel no pains, but yeah. twenty damage straight off the bat. I'll take that on a night. From one character as well, when you've still got a unit to do attacks, it's, mm. it's pretty hefty, mate. It's pretty good. <laughs> Next up, we've got Bloodlust. Okay. Uh, you can select the bearer units for heroic intervention, yep. zero CPs. Okay. And you can do it even if you've already used heroic intervention that turn. Okay. So from my experience, yep. heroic intervention hasn't really played a big part in games. I don't yep. know about yourself. So do you think this one's worth it? So I think at the current state of the game, yeah. we're in a very shooting-based uh, meta, yeah. which basically means a lot of the armies are taking more firepower, mm -hmm. more shooting units than they are combat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So therefore, when we are in a situation where we've got more combat going on, mm. more people are making charges, yeah. heroic intervention may become more relevant. Mm. So at the moment, in the current state of affairs, I'd probably say no. Yeah. I think the other reason why we haven't seen it a great deal is because it costs two CPs, heroic intervention. Yeah. So yeah. you are doing it for free. Mm -hmm. So I think with a combat army, you do have the option of the fart and death. Yeah. Combined with this is actually a very good counter to any other combat army. Okay. Yeah. That's, so I see that. I think if you were going into an army like Custodes mm -hmm. um, and you do want to heroically intervene, yeah. it might be good because you can pair this with a character that has the fight first keyword, and that's crucial. Yes. Because if you can do that, then that means when you hurricane to bean, it's not only for free, but you get your charge benefits, mm -hmm. not bonus, yeah. to fight first, but because the character gives fight first to the yeah. unit, this unit will fight before the charging unit. Yeah. So I think if custodes, mm -hmm. which are quite prevalent in the meta at the moment, yeah. really start to rise up, I could definitely see some... Uh, use on Bloodlust here yeah, for a World Eaters player. Definitely. It's an out, definitely. which I really like. Yeah, And obviously we'll come on to the character that gives the fight first um, yeah. in the unit spotlight because it's pretty naughty. It's pretty good. Yeah. So <laughs> next up we've got the Helm of the, bra the Brazen. Brazen Eye, yeah. And mm. what this does is it halves all damage coming in uh, to that character. Okay, so this is good on your maybe your Demon Prince. I think um, the Demon Prince is the yeah. ideal candidate for this, yeah. Exactly. Because he's on his own, mm -hmm. um, whether you've got wings or just on foot, this yeah. is the guy that you want to have half damage. Um, and we've we've got one in our army list that provides an incredible benefit, yeah. and bonus to the army. Mm -hmm. We need to keep him alive as best as we possibly can. Yeah, exactly. Now, when I'm, when I'm thinking about enhancements, mm -hmm. there's two types. Mm -hmm. There's essentials yeah. and would like to haves. Right. Okay. And then there's non-essentials yeah yeah okay so if we were to look at these if i was running angron favored of corn yeah where i'm re-rolling all my dice yeah. that's an essential yeah I see that if it's if he's not in my army list it's a it's nice to have yeah sure okay uh the the berserker glaive is not an essential piece mm -hmm. it's a nice to have yeah yeah the helm again another nice to have mm -hmm. the battle lust probably not even needed at the moment yeah. But in a more combat meta, could become actually essential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see there my kind of mindset when I'm thinking about these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So an essential one is this points are determining who it goes on. Yeah. And what unit. So already I'm thinking right, this is a package deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a would like to have this is oh I've got twenty points left I'll take that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not determining any other thought process. Yeah, sure. Apart from it can go on this character, I've got the points available, mm. rather than I have to take it, it has to go on this particular type of model and it has to go on that unit. Yeah. So that's determining a decision, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure All right. Okay. Yeah, nice, well, some nice enhancements there. Um, we'll just take another break and we'll look at the um, stratagems. Let's do it. Let's take a moment to appreciate Colorforge, our fantastic sponsor. Their range of spray paints has become our go-to for making our miniatures come to life quickly and efficiently. The quality and variety of colors they offer are truly unmatched, providing a smooth application for stunning effects every time. Check out Colorforge for your next hobby project. Okay, Steve, so run me through the stratagems then. What have we got? Okay, so the first one is called Gory Massacre. Okay. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this stratagem. Right. I've never used it. Right, okay. It's very situational, mm -hmm. and I'd probably not even worry about it. Okay, okay. Right. yeah, it's, sure. And being honest, the you have to make a charge, 
Right. You have to kill a unit. Right. And then when we get into your opponent's command phase, mm -hmm. they need to take battle shock checks within units of six inches. Now, okay. because they're taking battle shock in their turn, in their command phase, they can still use insane bravery if they wanted to. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if they're below half strength, they minus one from that test. Okay. But again, it's not really great. If they're below half strength, are they really going to be much of a threat anyway? Probably not. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's much better stratagems to spend your points on. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, I see that. The next one is one CP. It's for the skulls throwing. Okay, this is probably the best stratagem. Okay. If not, um, and it is an absolute essential playing piece to the to the army. Yep. In the fight phase only, mm -hmm. a world eaters unit that has not been selected to fight yet, one CP, and uh, you can basically get plus one to wound when you're targeting character, monster, or vehicle units. Okay, right, so that's that's going to help with your damage output, which it's, is really good. It's going to massively help. Yeah. You know, a lot of the eight bound, you know, they're strength seven, maybe mm. eight, into some of those tougher vehicles that are wounding on fives. This puts them wounding on fours. Yeah, that's massive. It's yeah. huge. Um, I mean, even your corn berserkers. Yeah. Getting them to win on fives rather than sixes into some of those tougher targets is really going to help with a huge amount of attacks. Definitely. So I think, yeah, one CP, skulls for the skull throne, um, is definitely yeah. a top stratagem. Top talk. So the next one is called For the Blood God. Okay, what's this do? Now this allows you, uh, once you've killed a unit in combat, mm -hmm. to make an additional blood tithe roll. Okay. And if you, you know, score a double or a triple, you can then keep it in addition to the other two that you have. Right, and then that lasts and for the same time period as yep. previously, right? Yep. Here's the issue, though. What's that? Blood times, remember, end at the battle round. Okay. So, therefore, this is great if you're going first. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going first, then, you know, you've maybe made some charges, killed some units, and now you've got an opportunity to maybe pop a defensive-based... Uh, like fight on death right. or sure. six plus feel no pain. Sure. Yeah. Because then that would last until your opponent's next turn. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you've gone first mm -hmm. and then I'm having my turn in the battle round, mm -hmm. unless there was a situation where I really, really needed yeah. like a lethal hits or something. Yeah. Like, like maybe there's a tank that you want to get rid of or something. Yeah. Sure. And maybe lots of units were in combat with it mm -hmm. and I had a couple of CPs because I'm going to want to use plus one to wound. Yeah. Anyway, I could maybe fight with like Angron first, mm -hmm. get the kill, then use this. Yeah. And yeah. then it would affect the rest of the army. But okay. that's very situational. Yeah. Whereas I think what's probably more common, kill a unit if you've gone first, pop it off, and then um, get that six plus fill, no yes. pain. Just pop it off, mate. Pop it off. Pop it off. Right. <laughs> Next one is Corn Cares Not. Okay. Right. What's this do? This is fight phase only. Right. This is the, my biggest issue with this stratagem. Mm. And there's another. Okay. It is two CPs. Okay, so it's quite hefty. Yeah. Minus one damage. But it's got good benefits. But, but only in combat. Uh, yeah, yeah, true, true. And if you're in combat with world eaters, you've made a grave mistake. Whoa. I haven't, because I'm going to get in combat and I'm going to kill all the world eaters. No, you won't. Oh. Because you can't out-combat world eaters. These are... Unless masters. you're blood angels. <laughs> These are the masters, okay? Now, my point is, I would have loved this to have been two CPs, mm -hmm. any phase. Yeah. Because it would have really helped the army in a, in a place in which it really struggles. Yeah. Now, I'm, you know, maybe it shouldn't go on Angron. Maybe that'd be too strong. I don't even know if it would, though, Steve. With him coming back or going on, for example, a corn lot of skulls, I think two yeah. CPs in the shooting phase is too strong. Potentially. I think infantry mm. is probably fine. Yeah, yeah. But, and, you know, you could then have an argument of one CP or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think as it stands, it's a great stratagem, yeah. but very situational. Yeah, exactly. Okay? It's not benefiting you where you want it to benefit you. No. Okay. We need help getting into combat, not when we're there. You do need help, Steve. I need a lot. <laughs> Getting the combat is always my biggest bugbear in life. Yeah. The next up is blood offering. Okay. okay. Fantastic stratagem. Really useful. Brilliant for playing the mission. Yeah. Okay. And what this does, one CP, and it allows you to control an objective mm -hmm. if you're currently stood on it when you're destroyed. 
Okay, so you guys go pop on an objective, yep. blood everywhere, and the objective is now yours until your opponent comes and takes it. Which is exactly the type of rule that you want for a combat-based army. Yeah. Because you want to be pushing forward, mm -hmm. leaving the objectives behind, and not leaving assets there. Yes. You know, we don't have assets to really leave to carry on shooting like mm -hmm. many other armies can. We don't have, you know, cheap loan operators. Um, the best we've got is a unit of spawn or jackals. Yeah. And even so, they're, they're looking at around 75 points. Yes. So it's not ideal. Last stratagem. Yep. And again, brilliant stratagem. Mm -hmm. Use this one all the time. Yep. Apoleptic Frenzy. Okay, right. This allows you, when you make uh, an advance roll, you just go six inches instead. Fantastic when you combine that with the advance and charge. And plus two move. And plus two move. Yeah. Okay, so it's now quick. they are basically 100 meter sprinters going across the battlefield. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's really, really strong. Um, I wish there was ways in the army to gain more CPs because there's not as it stands. Yeah. There's no ways apart from the heroic intervention to get a free stratagem. Yeah. And there's no ways to like do like bounce stratagems across multiple units. Yeah. There's no like that captain ability that we've no. seen quite commonly in 10th edition, isn't it? It's... Exactly. Yeah. So they are very much restricted on their yeah. resources yeah and it really can feel like that as well yeah. you need to spend your cps very very wisely well don't forget you also have all the core strats as well right so yeah. grenades are fantastic yeah um, it's okay um i think you know again these are so powerful yeah that you just have to plan these in your game plan okay right yeah. sure sure nice so right. i think i'd rather not do the three more wounds averagely from grenade stratagem to guarantee me a six inch advance for example yeah. if i'm ch you know wanting to make that charge yeah no that makes sense so, yeah. that makes sense that's why you're the expert steve um but <laughs> let's um let's now go and look at some units let's do um it. and yeah with the release of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition at Vanguard Tactics, we've put together the perfect course for you. If you're already playing 9th edition, but you want to seamlessly transition into the new edition, leave behind everything you know about 9th and understand everything you need to know about 10th, then this short course is going to be ideal. We break down all the complexities and give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to really make the most from 10th edition. We're going to help you understand all the basics of the game and then some top tips along the way to help you really get the most from your army and your playing experience. And if that's something you want to do and get signed up on our short course, which you can study in your own time, then do check out the links below and get signed up to our Accelerator program. Okay, Steve, right. What's the first unit you want to look at? Well, I think it has to be Daddy. Thanks. <laughs> Please don't call him Daddy and look at me in the eyes. <laughs> Daddy Angron. Daddy Angron. Okay, sure. Right, what's, what does Daddy do? So Angron, he has an ability which is absolutely incredible. It's tied into your blood tithe points. Okay. Okay. Yep. Or your blessings of corn, should I say. Mm -hmm. And if you roll three sixes. Right. He comes back to life. Okay, so in ninth edition, he had a similar rule, but obviously it wasn't with the lessons mm -hmm. of corn. But he could keep coming back, right? Yeah. Um, so it's nice to see that he can still do that. Yeah. He comes back with four wounds remaining. He's got sixteen wounds, toughness eleven, two up save, four plus and run will save. Oh. Okay. He moves fourteen inches, and then you could apoplectic frenzy him. Yeah. Plus two move. Six, plus two move. Advance and charge. Advance and charge. Yeah. So he, turn one, he could be going. 20 inches then charging basically first turn charge every single game pretty much if you roll enough on your blessings yeah now why is this important the reboard in blood that's why we said about that enhancement yeah to give you that ability just to re-roll of the dice okay because yeah. you do need him coming back yes you know he's i think he's pointed in such a way that he does he should come back at least once yeah to make sure he's relevant because otherwise his damage can be really strong mm. but as soon as he faces anything with an vulnerable save his attacks can really start to diminish. Yeah, exactly. When because there's quite a few things now because there's nothing that ignores invulnerable saves in the game now, is it? So invulnerable saves become only very, devastating wounds. Or devastating wounds. And exactly. he doesn't have it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so he's got no feel, no pain baked in. Yeah, he can deep strike um, at the start of the charge phase, which I absolutely love mm -hmm. because he can come in from deep strike. Yes, and then actually pick an ability. And this was the issue in ninth edition, wasn't it? Yeah. Was he never got his abilities when he came back? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So the three abilities you can pick from in the charge phase is you can either have an aura of six inches to get plus one to the charge roll. 
Nice. Okay. So you're needing eight inch yeah, charges. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next one is called Infectious Rage. Um, you get basically, if you're below starting strength, that's a bit annoying though. Yeah. Um, you can have plus one attack. Okay. Yeah. That's a late game one, potentially. Mm. Well, it would be late game where it's going to come into effect. Yeah. Um, so maybe when he comes back later on in the game, you could give guys extra ones. But I think the the other ones are just better. So this this next one is just a million times better. Yeah. And it is reroll your hit rolls. Yeah. It, that's fantastic because he's one of the. I think there's only two ways in the army to actually reroll hits, right? Mm. And it's he's the big advocate for that. What? So I can if I can always reroll hit rolls. Yeah. Or have plus one attack if I'm with most of the army hitting on two uh, threes anyway. Mm -hmm. So as long as I convert a one or a two yeah. into a hit, I'm getting exactly the same as having plus one attack. Yes. But there's yeah. none of that requirement to be under starting strength. Yeah. So I think for me, if that if that said plus one strength and attack. On top of the charge bonus, maybe. On top of the charge yeah. bonus. Yeah. Or maybe even plus one to hit. Yeah. Now we're cooking. Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. But for me, it's going plus one to charge mm -hmm. if you're coming in from deep strike yep. with lots of units. Mm -hmm. If not, if you're already on the table, go for those rerolls. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, no, it I also agree. will affect himself as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Then we've also got the. Um, obviously, he does bracket when he gets to six wounds. But that's yeah, about it, really. Yeah. That, that's fine. Damage ability, you know, he's at eight attacks or 18 attacks. He always hits on twos. He's either strength 16 or strength eight. He's mm. either AP4, AP2. He's either D6 plus two damage or two damage. So he's got a strike or a sweep. Okay. It's yeah. nice to see that his sweep is two damage, though. Um, it is, yeah. I yeah. think it damage one, you'd never take no, it. No, exactly. You would just strike. Yeah. With, you know, and again, plus one attack, that means nine mm -hmm. or 19 attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like that. I think. His damage capability is there, but as you said, when it comes to the invulnerable saves, it, it, yeah. that's where he starts. You, you're kind of hoping your opponent fudges their rolls. and Yeah, that's not a yeah. great feeling. Yeah. No. You know, he should go in absolutely murk anything he Maybe touches. Maybe devastating wounds? Or would that be too much, do you think? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what the answer is to that. Yeah. Um, it's I, tough, isn't it? It really is, because yeah. you don't want him to become ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the answer to him. Okay. But he's good. He's good. I think you take him. He's good. Angry Ron is in the list. I think most lists do take him, which is why we thought at the end of this we'll go over an army list that doesn't include him. Yeah, Because exactly. if you're not a fan of big models, yeah. or maybe you just want to have more models on the table, because yeah. he is coming at quite a you know chunky point. He's about 400 something points, right? Yeah. 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 So you can get a lot of other things for his points. Yeah. So let's go over what those characters could look like. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, what's the next one then? Mate? So the the next standout for us is the World Eaters Demon Prince. I like this guy. Okay. So with a six inch aura, infantry units, mm -hmm. World Eaters obviously. Yeah. Have a four plus and vulnerable save. That's massive. Yeah. This is really key. Now, if you're not running Rhino Rush. Yeah. Or lots of units in Land Raiders or Deep Strike or Strat Reserves, mm -hmm. you don't need it. No. 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 But if you're running Berserkers or Jackals on foot. Yeah. Eight bound on foot. Definitely take this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, the Demon Prince himself is already stacked in terms of his profile, so he's, he's a great character himself, but yep. that bonus is fantastic. He does get Devastating Wounds on the charge. He will be seven attacks, hitting on twos, strength 10, AP2, flat three damage. Okay, so if we pair that with a Berserker Glaive Enhancement, mm -hmm. maybe we could potentially get to damage six. You could, with Devastating with Wounds. With Devastating Wounds on the charge. Yeah. It's pretty spicy. But this guy's so key for keeping the army around, we yeah. probably want him having half damage. Yeah, he's more of a defensive character. Because which... he's, he's not lone operative. No. So now all of a sudden you're 10 wounds, you're making that yeah. effectively feel like a 20 wound model. Yeah. Exactly. Aside from, you know, if you're being hit from, like, obviously damage one attacks. Yeah, yeah. But you are really increasing that durability when it comes down to anything that's da damage two, especially. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, halving damage does also affect devastating wounds. Yeah. So that will massively impact the amount of damage coming in. Well, he could also get a fill no pain from the blessings of corn as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it, I, I think he's a brilliant inclusion, as you said, if you're going for that more infantry style yep. based army. You know, two up save, four plus in bun, toughness 10, 10 wounds, pretty tanky. Yeah. You obviously can't join any units. No, but he's doing the job. So next up is Lord Invocatus. Okay, Avocado. What's this guy doing? Now, he's a great little combat character. Yeah. Really good at killing elite infantry. That's where yep. his kind of specialism is. Mm -hmm. um, you can fall back and still charge. So that's brilliant because it's working in conjunction with the detachment rule, right? Yeah. 
Okay. That's nice. really, really good because you don't want to ever have a really expensive combat unit bogged yeah. down in combat. No. Okay. No. It only takes, you know, an opponent to maybe charge you with a couple of annoying rhinos. Yeah. From, so you can't really pile in. Mm. And all of a sudden you feel like you're bogged down in combat with a couple of units you are going to struggle to kill. Yeah. Get out of there, go and charge the next big hitter yeah, or the yeah, next sure. unit you have to kill. Sure. So this guy also has another couple of really cool abilities. Mm -hmm. He can join um, eight bound, exalted eight bound, or corn berserkers. Okay. He's got a really fast movement of twelve. Yeah. So not only that, but he also has scout six, and he can pick two infantry units mm -hmm. to give scout move two as well. So he's brilliant in. Obviously, we'll probably come to him later when we start talking about this list. Yeah. But he's brilliant to kind of get that army moving when mm -hmm. you want it to start moving. It really can, yeah. Yeah. Also. He can massively impact the Corn Berserker's movement. Yes. Because you can push him to movement 14. Mm -hmm. And if he's at the front of the, of the unit, and his base is probably just over three inches. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got two inches back. Mm -hmm. So now he could be running 14 inches. Yeah. Yeah. Then you've got that three inch base mm -hmm. and then five inches because of coherency. Yeah. So the two models behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we're looking at nine. Yeah. So actually, we're in a pretty good place there because if our other corn berserkers are moving eight inches, mm -hmm. then we just move him thirteen instead of yeah. the fourteen. Yeah. And actually now we're in a situation where this unit of corn berserkers they're not moving eight inches anymore with the plus two move. They're now moving yeah. thirteen. Yeah. Because okay. of his base size and coherency. Yeah. So he's leading from the front and he'll massively get you in combat much faster. Yeah, I didn't think of it like that, actually. It's yeah. really, really impactful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people instantly put in with the eight bound. Yeah. But with Berserkers, it really gets them up the field much quicker. Well, they do, I'm, I'm sure we'll touch on it, but they do have Blood Surge as well, right? Yeah. So that's another bit of movement baked into the, the yeah. unit's profile. So, okay, right. Yeah, so these guys really want to get into combat. They, they really do, yeah. yeah so being cool. able to pick two units to have Scout is great. Now, that if he does join the Corn Berserkers, they have to be one of those units. Okay, right. You can't sure. then like just stick, um, if you can't pick two others, yeah. although he has Scout, in order to Scout move, every single model in your unit has to have it. Yeah, so his, his rule doesn't confer to their, their rule. No, you right, have sure. to pick it as one of your units to pick, and then you can pick another friendly infantry right, unit. Sure, okay? sure. Yep. Next up is the Master Executioner. Okay, I he, think this guy's stand out, to be honest. He's really great. Yeah. Great price point. Yeah. Uh, he has fight first built in when he's leading a unit. Yeah. So that's brilliant when you're being charged or hero clean to beaning, mm -hmm. as we alluded to earlier. Yeah. He re-rolls all hits and wounds against characters. Brilliant. Okay. Um, that's just for himself. And he getting, he's getting five, six attacks on the charge. Yeah. Hits on two, strength seven or strength eight on the charge, minus mm -hmm. two, two damage. Devastating wounds. And precision. Yep. Less relevant. Right. Because I think the key is... Just giving this guy the Berserker Glaive. Yep. Hopefully, you know, the average is to get plus two. So plus two attacks, plus two damage. Yep, sure. So you're then going up to um, six, eight attacks. Yep. Hopefully with sustained hits. Yep. Okay. And then you're re-rolling anything that isn't a six mm -hmm. to get as many sixes as you can for sustained hits. Yep. You know, you should be looking between eight and ten hits. Yeah, yeah. Then anything that isn't a wound, you re-roll it. Yeah. Because the majority of the units he wants to go into, remember the character keyword is conferred to the unit. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you're going up against a unit with a character in, mm -hmm. even if they're like a support character, yeah, just nuke the unit. Well, Get the unit gone. The thing is, don't forget, like it's, it's going to be a minimum of damage free, really, when you're looking at with yeah. the plus onto it, potential damage five. Yeah. So when you convert the um, devastating wounds, yeah. five mortal wounds per wound that goes through potentially and this is exactly how we you know did yeah. the 20 damage to the yeah. knight the knight was a character yeah and you know re-rolling those hits and wounds he's just he's taking eds yep he, spelling names he really is yeah. so uh, again he can go with berserkers and i'd recommend you take one yes definitely definitely well they sound like brilliant characters i mean we have a few more that we wanted to just highlight didn't we yeah um so the mauler fiend so what was we talking about with the mauler fiend then so the mauler fiend is gives you something different that the army struggles with. Yeah. A little bit durability. Yeah. Um, they are quite expensive at 175. Okay. Um, and although their damage output is great, mm -hmm. they offer something that is good if you don't have Angron. Yes. That kind of D6 plus one damage. Yeah. Shrink 14, seven attacks. Um, 
they can get plus two to the charge. Yes. If they're under starting strength, the opponent's you know unit that you're fighting. Yeah. Um, and you know again with something like that, you get plus one to hit as well yeah. if they are under starting strength. Mm -hmm. So here's the conundrum. Mm -hmm. You need something like a land raider. Yeah. A, a predator, something along those lines to actually do the damage first, mm -hmm. just to chip a wound off at range to get this guy having that yeah. plus two to charge. Yeah, sure. Because you could put it in strategic reserves. Mm -hmm. So this guy does have a melter, mm -hmm. but it's only six inch range. Right. So yeah. if you come off from strat reserve, it's not really going to be impactful in no, any way. No. Okay. Him combined with Angron, all of a sudden you're getting plus three to your charge roll. Yeah. Very good. If you're yeah, coming sure. in from strat reserve, you only need a six on two dice. Yeah. But you do need something to probably, at its prime target, take some wounds off first. Yeah. So yeah. You, so you want it, it works in conjunction with ranged units, which isn't necessarily the strength of the world eaters. No. But again, it does offer extra damage and stuff, which Angron would if he wasn't in the list. Or he's great at just kind of hunking down on an objective for you in the midfield. Yeah. He's really good at that kind of, that, Normally, you've got two objectives close by, one in the middle of the table, mm -hmm. and you've got one on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. Great at just steamrolling into the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, really good in terms of his nice big base, so it should be able to make contact with one enemy model at least. Yeah. Um, and, and just kind of bully anyone off the middle objective, yeah. Well, it can go quite fast, because movement 10. Plus two. Ten, plus two. Then apoplectic frenzy to get an extra six on the advance with advance and charge. So it's so going 18 inches. 18 inches. Before so charging, yeah. It can really get up the board quite fast. Yeah, and yeah. then with that plus two charge is brilliant. So I think him paired with a shooting unit yeah. could be great. Yeah, definitely. I think it really could be. You could take a Mauler Fiend and its equivalent. The Forge Fiend. The Forge Fiend. Yes. I think them as a little pair mm. could be quite nice. Yeah, I'd definitely. I'd love to see a list with two of each. Just imagine all of them with Angron though, like just maybe like four of them and Angron and just Going, yeah, going we off. let the dogs out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so next up is the eight bound. Yeah. One of my favorite units, I think, uh, just the model is absolutely incredible. You love your muscle guys. These, I do. Mm. Uh, these guys, they scout move six. In nice. Eight, okay. Nice. And they have a, an aura of reroll ones to wound. Mm -hmm. If your opponent is under um, half strength, yep. then they get four rerolls to wound. That comes up a lot less relevant. That's more end game again. That the four yeah. rerolls, but it, when do you need reroll wounds against a unit you've pretty much killed anyway? Yeah, true. So reroll ones is good enough though mm -hmm. as an aura. I think that's okay. Um, I'd have loved this to have been like the one which is when your opponent's on an objective, yeah. this unit gets it rather than being an aura. Yeah, I think it would have been a bit more effective. But anyway, the scout moves six, so therefore they're moving nine with maybe a plus two. Mm -hmm. Turn one they could be going fifteen inches. Yeah, plus that six inches from apoplectic frenzy. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're get, going fast as well. They're getting in combat. Mm. Um, and that's exactly where they want to be. You know, seven attacks on the charge, um, hitting on three, strength five, minus two, two, or strength six, minus two, two damage. Yeah, they're, they're butchers, aren't they? They, they? they will tear up most things in combat. Infantry, yep. elite infantry, they'll, they'll do the work. Light vehicles. Light vehicles. Them in conjunction with that plus one to wound strategy yeah, sure. against characters, monsters, or vehicles. They, nice. This unit really does some work. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Um, next up, then, the Exalted 8 Bound. And I think there's an argument for either or. Yeah. Uh, these guys don't scout move, but they do deep strike. Okay, right. So them paired with Angron to get that plus one to charge. Mm -hmm. They get a six plus feel no pain in built. Yeah. If you're in combat and you want to fall back, then basically um, you've got to take a leadership check. If you fail it, mm. you have to stay still. Yeah, it's and it's, it's worth noting that you can't re-roll leadership checks as well with command point re-rolls. So... It's a potent, there's more of a chance of it actually going off now. Yep. Um, um, then these guys with their chain fists, they're getting up to like strength 14, 15, minus nice. three, two damage. So a little bit better into those tougher targets. Yeah. Um, it would have been great to see them with some sort of three damage weapons because damage two yeah. sometimes doesn't quite cut it. Yeah. But that being said, a great unit. I think the nice thing about this unit is that six plus feel no pain. Yeah. The six plus feel no pain when boosted to a five up mm -hmm. massively increases this unit's durability. Yep. Um, there's a huge swing between five up and a six up. And then also with the Invocatus, they are infantry. Mm -hmm. So therefore you can obviously give them that, you know, scout move. Yes. So you can have normal eight bound moving up. Mm -hmm. Invocatus with either this unit yep. or this unit on the table gaining that scout mm. move as well. So you can just hide into that midfield cover. Yeah, definitely. So you're filling in the gaps which this unit provides, but onto the 
the exalted eight bands. Yep. Okay, nice, I like it. And you've got it. a bit more durability in there. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Okay, so the last unit we want to talk about really is the Corn Berserkers. The staple of the World Leaders Army, right? You'd hope. <laughs> you would hope, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, I think these guys are overcosted. Okay. And I'd probably say that is true for most of the army. It's a very points heavy army. Very points heavy army. I yeah. think you look at it on paper, you look at their damage output, it looks great. Mm -hmm. But the way that the Corn Berserkers work, trying to get all those models into combat is actually difficult. Yeah. Especially around ruins and terrain. You don't often find yourself always fighting on full efficiency. Yeah. That being said, they got a really cool rule. Every time you shoot me, mm -hmm. I can then basically, if I've lost a model, I can do something called a blood surge move. Okay, what's a blood surge move? A roll of dice, and that's a fire move. Okay. And I can go into combat with you. Right, okay. Do you get charge benefits for that happening? No, because right. it is just a move. Right, so maybe I can see uses for it working and uses for it... Well, remember, because if you're shooting me, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. When we get into combat, I'm going to fight before you. Yeah, true. So that is a benefit. Yeah. Don't ever do it if you're going to die in combat. Yeah. yeah. Because if you don't have the attacks to kill your opponent, then it's not going to be great. Mm -hmm. It own, it works brilliantly with the Lord Avocatus because yeah. then if you don't kill the target you've blood surged into, you can fall back and recharge. Yes. Right. Okay. Now I'm seeing it all come together. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so again, it could be good if you've got the Master Executioner in there because you can obviously blood surge into combat. Yeah. He gives the unit fight first, even then if you are charged. Yeah. So you don't need to necessarily worry about being charged. Yeah, sure. You'll still fight first. Um, so yeah, on the whole, nice little unit, good attacks, five attacks on, in combat, mm -hmm. strength five minus or strength six minus one, one damage. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Can go in rhinos. Again, that's pretty nice as well. Uh, movement six, you can boost it to eight, advance and charge. Yeah. Um, and it has an icon. And that means every time you make that blessings of the corn roll, if you're within range of an objective, you can re-roll one of the dice. Okay, right. And this is the same as the jackals as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that can come in handy. And that's in conjunction with that um, enhancement yeah. that we're talking about. So, okay, so you can really start to fish for the, the ones you want on these blessings rolls, can't you? Yep. And because the, you're making the blessings roll again, mm -hmm. you could then fish for some more sixes. So right. I think if you're taking Angron, you want a couple of units of berserkers, a couple of units of jackals, yep. get on the objectives, fish for those re-rolls, make sure, sure it's coming back. Sure. The other nice thing to note about the Jackals is that they do make your objective sticky. So that yep. means if you control it in your command phase, it will remain under your control even until you, um, you know, even if you're destroyed and you leave it until your opponent takes it off you. Yep. But remember, we've got the stratagem anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think a unit of Jackals is nice. These guys, though, they should be good into most horde. Yep. They're good into light infantry mm -hmm. and even heavier infantry, mm -hmm. but much beyond that, they start to really struggle. So yeah. you need to really support the army with some good, strong anti-tank anti options. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it looks like we've got a decent range of units in mm -hmm. the army. As you said, the army, the points cost of the army is quite hefty. Yeah. Um, so you're paying the tax for these, so trying to maybe invest into durability yeah. in the army is probably worth it with this, um, with the index. That's exactly it. So yeah. should we go over the army list? Let's, let's do the army list, yeah. Okay, Steve, so let's run through this list. So well, Daddy Angron, he's obviously not coming with us, okay? He's Please staying, stop saying Daddy Angron. He's staying on the bench for now. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so to key off, this is 1,995 points. Okay. There was something I'd have liked to have had, but I just didn't have the points for it. Right. And okay. we'll go over that at the end. Yeah. But we've got the Lord Invocatus. Yeah. We've already said about his utility. Mm -hmm. We can put him with either the eight bound that I've mm -hmm. got in this army. I've got six eight bound and I've got six exalted eight bound. Okay, right, sure. Two choices. Yeah. Okay. I've also got in this army a demon prince on foot to give me that four plus yes. invulnerable save. Yeah. Okay. We've then got two Masters of Execution mm -hmm. to make sure I've got those fight first benefits. Yep. Um, one of them has got the Berserker Glaive, as we spoke about. Yeah, sure. For me, that was really, really nice. Yep. I need to use the Demon Prince quite carefully. I didn't have the points for the enhancement to half damage. It would have been nice. So I just need to make sure I'm keeping him safe with, um, you know, using terrain to the yeah, best yeah. of my ability. Okay. Then we've got 10 Jackals. Right, okay. The goal with this is to probably sticky my home field objective. Right, so you can then move off yes. and unleash utter carnage. And I'm probably going to have this unit in, deployed in such a way that allows me to either um, sticky it, mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then in later turns, move on to the other no man's land objective and try and sticky that one. Okay. Even if they get there and die, one CP is now mine anyway. Yeah. That is their one goal. Try mm -hmm. and sticky two objectives. Yeah, definitely. I'm asking a lot from these guys, but... <sighs> See if they can do the job. <laughs> we, there we go. Now, the next up, we've got three units of 10 Corn Berserkers. Okay. You right. know, kitted out with the Eviscerators, absolutely everything, yeah. the Icons. Um, now... I was tempted to drop a unit of Corn Berserkers and mm -hmm. just run two units with the two Master Executioners. Right. But I like the flexibility of that third one to just put the Invocatus with another unit of 10 as well. Okay. Okay. Right, sure. So I do like that as an option. Yeah. Um, if we drop out the Corn Berserkers, mm -hmm. we can actually take another 30 Jackals. Yeah, this, is, this was a debate we were having off camera, wasn't it? Whether or not to actually go for the Horde of Jackals yeah. or for the extra... Berserkers. It's, it's a tough choice, really, isn't it? Because all of a sudden, those jackals, you can take them in units of 20. Yep. They get a six plus fill no pain built in. Yep. There might even be a janky list with. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? 80. No. Oh. 120. Oh, okay. Well, I was going for Corn's numbers. But no. Sorry. 120. Right. All having a four plus and runnable save. Yep, because of the demon prince. And a five plus fill no pain. <sighs> there could be play there. Yeah. I mean, it's not this list. I would hate to paint that many jackals, but yeah. I will probably cost it up to see what it looks like. Anyway. Yeah, sure. So um, I've got my 30 corn berserkers we spoke about. In rhinos? No. Okay, right. Um, I wish I had the points. Yeah. But I'm just foot slogging it. Foot slogging. And then I've got the eight bound and the exalted eight bound. Yeah. Here's the thing though. Six mans, right? Six mans. Cool. The exalted eight bound can deep strike. Yeah. The eight bound can pregame move. Mm -hmm. Two of these units now of corn berserkers are going to be scout moving yep so that means i can leave one unit behind in my you know typically there's a piece of terrain that's on your deployment line yes it can stay there mm -hmm. it can stage until the middle piece of terrain yeah yeah okay the great thing about that is then that middle piece of terrain i can then press 20 corn berserkers into yes yeah, yeah. right okay or i can press 10 into the no man's land which is typically near the other objective on the map yeah and then i can push into the center the eight bound and the corn berserkers yeah yeah i've sure. got i should have the footprint there yeah yeah definitely so i'm utilizing how much terrain space we have with our deployment to make mm -hmm. sure we're maximizing that yeah so exactly. that we can then get a nice foothold into the game yeah. because then turn one um if i'm going first i can either pre-game move for example, if I want to kill the infantry, the corn berserkers yeah, can go in. Yeah. If I want to kill light vehicles, heavy infantry, the eight bound can go in. Yeah, sure. So again, the exalted eight bound are in deep strike. That's fine. They can mm -hmm. come down um, into a staging point and then they can charge. Yeah. So they'll drop down turn two where I know they'll be safe in terrain. Mm -hmm. And then they can move in advance uh, turn three to make sure I've got an available charge. Or rapid mm -hmm. ingress. Rapid, yeah, I was going to say rapid ingress. Um, one question, why a unit of six exalted eight bound rather than the two units of three? Um, yeah, I think it's a good question. Mm. I think the option of having the eight bound start on the table, right. the exalted eight bound is quite nice. Yeah. Um, the, what I do like about them is their big base size. Yes. So it is easier to get big bases in combat, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because then when you're getting base to base, when you've got larger bases, it is just easier, yeah, yeah. especially with the uh, Invocatus. Mm. Maybe another reason why you should probably put him with the Corn Berserkers, yeah. because it's easier for them to get into combat if he's made it. Yeah, sure. Now, what I like about the six is that it should guarantee the kill. Yes. There's right. nothing worse than when you're a World Eaters player is not killing the unit, yeah. and then them either shooting you back when it comes to their shooting phase, or them fighting you back. So yeah. I think just having, you know, we've got five key units in this army. We mm -hmm. talk a lot about this on the academy. What right. are your key units? What are the justifications for them? And why? Yeah. What are their primary, secondary, and tertiary roles? Okay, so mm -hmm. we go into this in a lot more detail there. But um, yeah, that's the army list. I think it is thematic. Yep different mm -hmm. um and it's got a good variety of units as well and yeah. if you're not the biggest fan of daddy angron then he can uh go on the shelf yeah and we can have some fun with some other units well you've got a nice range of the characters on on offer as well i think which is nice it's, it's a shame that i don't think khan has as much play um he's, he's <sighs> all right but it's, it's a shame that we're not going to see him in many lists I, um, I don't know you could in this list take out the master executioner and probably put him in instead yeah Okay. And maybe you consider that he's flat damage three. 
He does have a good damage profile. That's the one thing with Khan, yeah. right? Well, you know, we could look at his points. What does he come in at? Khan the Betrayer. He's 95 points. So we'd have to drop the Executioner. Yeah. And then we're still short of 10 points. Maybe you could with very... do the Jackals then instead of the, the extra. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's it's, it's good to go, maybe look at different options for the faction, right? Yeah. Um, or you just drop the guy. You drop the enhancement. No, Steve. We don't drop that enhancement. Okay. There's too good, and we don't drop it. <laughs> that high enhancement has to stay. That's my, that's my essential. That's my non-negotiable. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this a list review and also this how to play, and it's given you some great ideas about how to move forward with your World Eaters army in the future. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe. Let us know: Are you taking Angron or not? I want to see it in the comments with Daddy Angron. Daddy Angron, <laughs> in or out. Let us know, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.